Hello everyone, and welcome back to First and Fifteen Fantasy Football Podcast. If you haven't already, please give us a like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel so that we can continue to give you the best fantasy football content and the most effective strategies to win you your season. Please follow as we continue to give you the uh, most hot topics, discussions, and analysis in and around the league, fantasy football updates, injury analysis, and effective strategies so that you can win during your championship season. Hello everyone, this is Carlos, and welcome back to another episode of First and Fifteen Fantasy Football Podcast. Now we're going to be getting and diving into the AFC North. Let's get into the Cleveland Browns now. The Cleveland Browns finished off the season with an 8-9 and nine record, just one game below 500. Um, their offensive production was primarily in the rushing attack. They ranked third overall. And in the passing attack, um, well, that was a little bit less balanced. And the passing attack, they were ranked 28th overall uh, last year, uh, putting them there definitely down on the barrel of the NFL itself. Um, but the Russian attack, led by Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt mostly, and uh, Darren Johnson, as, you can, uh, as he kind of emerged throughout the season. Um, however, uh, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt did suffer some, some injuries uh, throughout the season that, that plagued them throughout the season. Um, the head coach, Kevin Stefanski, is going to be coming back with offensive coordinator Alex Van Pelt. Alex Van Pelt is going to be in his third offensive um, offensive season um, as offensive coordinator. And so, you know, right along with his original game plan, um, now with some acquisitions happening within the offseason, we're going to see if, um, you know, Alex Van Pelt is going to be able to open up that offense and include some more passing uh, productivity. Now that they're gaining some uh, Mari Cooper, Deshaun Watson, and some of these uh, drastic changes that are happening in the Browns itself. Um, before we get into all that, let's get into some of the injuries that played them last year. Uh, the first person we're going to talk about is Baker Mayfield. Uh, Baker Mayfield was obviously a quarterback for the Browns last year, but he suffered a, you know, some significant shoulder injuries throughout the season. He uh, played in 14 games total. He did miss three games. Um, he had a labral tear on week two, played through that week six, uh, missed one game because, because of it. Then he missed the last game due uh, to surgical operation. Um, he did have a labral repair on that shoulder itself uh, in January 2022. You can expect a four to six month recovery for a labral repair, uh, specifically in the shoulder, and for return to play. He should be good to go for training camp, but we'll keep monitoring the reports to ensure that he is making some progress for that. Uh, Baker Mayfield ended up the season with 253 pass attempts at um, 3,010 yards, uh, 13 in in interceptions total. He added uh, 134 yards of rushing as well. He threw for 17 pass TDs uh, with an average of 7.2 yards per attempt. The next notable Browns I want to get into is Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb um, did suffer you know, a calf strain in week five in which allowed him to miss three games total. Um, he played a total of 14 games. Um, also, you know, when we were looking at that calf strain uh, that he suffered during the season, we did an analysis on that, and we determined that he would be missing three weeks because of that calf strain. Normally, with calf strains, you're going to see anywhere between, um, if it's a grade one, you're going to look at one to three weeks. Grade two, you're thinking about two to four, even three to five to six weeks. Now, obviously, longer, uh, more severe the injury itself the more delayed healing there is and so some of these calf strains specifically because they produce so much power and so much uh, raw strength through that uh, ankle joint and through that knee joint it puts a lot of tension on that gastrocnemius specifically in the game of football hence why it takes um, you know a longer period of time to come back to and to produce a lot of power from that muscle itself so it was evident in his um, time recovery he um, it was exactly three weeks exactly um, before he returned, uh, which was we kind of anticipated as well. Um, he finished the season with uh, 20 rushes at 100, I mean, 20 receptions at 174 yards, and then added 228 rushes at 1,259 yards. Again, if he didn't suffer that calf strain, then I would probably see that number rise up to about 1,400, 1,500 perhaps, um, specifically if that calf strain did not occur itself. Um, he did add one reception TD and eight rush TDs. Um, again, we're looking to see if Nick Chubb continues, you know, with this rushing attack along with Kareem Hunt in the, in the backfield as well. 
Let's get into Kareem Hunt now. Um, Kareem Hunt actually suffered kind of very similar injury as uh, Nick Chubb through the season as well. Uh, Nick, uh, Kareem Hunt unfortunately did suffer two significant injuries out of the season, uh, which plagued his season. He played in a total of eight games and he missed nine. He had a calf strain in week six and he missed five games. He then had an ankle sp high ankle sprain in week 14 then missed four games. Recall that when we talk about high ankle sprains, calf strains, quad strains, hamstring strains, those are at least significant enough to miss some time. It's rare that you're going to see somebody bounce right immediately back and be ready for that next game. If it is a grade one, then they have an opportunity to. However, some of these injuries and conditions that occur during the season are often greater than just kind of grade one. Um, it was evident in Kareem Hunt's production as well, um, the time missed. Um, because of those nine games missed, he only rushed for uh, 386 yards, um, well below his, you know, his potential, and 22 receptions at 174 yards, again, well below his potential there. Um, he is utilized more in that third down back, um, you know, formation and, ro and rotation, and so we're seeing that because of that injury and also not being available for those games you'll see his fantasy production uh, decrease and specifically in those ppr settings and um you know the receptions and you'll see that those decrease at the same time he did add five rush tds which just kind of salvaged his season um, however again plagued by injuries it wasn't significant enough uh, to make a significant impact on your roster last year but we're looking to see that he makes a big bounce back this year. And he's going to be another focal point in this rushing offense. Some other key notable Browns we'll talk about is going to be Darren Johnson. He was added throughout the season. Um, he's going to be, um, you know, coming in as ranked 64 running back overall. Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb is about 12 running back overall right now. And Kareem Hunt is your 30th running back overall, um, according to redraft leagues right now. And so, you know, with those three individuals, you're going to see that they're going to be spearheading the run, rushing attack, uh, specifically with Darren Johnson kind of emerging last year out of the you know necessity of an injury. And so, you know, he did have some healthy scratches last year because Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, or at least Nick Chubb, was a lot more healthy throughout the season and was being available and, and, and able to, you know, finish off the season uh, specifically. But when Darius Johnson was in there, he did rush for 100, and, 100 times for 534 yards. He did add 19 receptions for 137 yards with three rush TDs. Again, we're going to see if, you know, Darren Johnson also continues to make an improvement. Um, now specifically having one season underneath his belt with the Cleveland Browns. And now did sign a tender with the Cleveland Browns to ensure that he continues to uh, produce uh, for them. Rashad Higgins, um, he uh, is a uh, wide receiver for the Cleveland Browns last year. He actually got traded to Carolina this year. Um, he's going to be your ranked 154 wide receiver overall in your redraft leagues. He played in 12 games last year. He missed actually a total of five games last year. Um, Rashad Higgins had 24 receptions for 275 yards and adding one reception TD. Um, he wasn't too much viable in the offense. Again, that lopsidedness of that rushing attack versus that passing attack um, was definitely uneven. And you was, it was definitely seen in the, in the season itself. Um, now with the addition of Deshaun Watson, we're going to see if that continue, if that changes uh, overall. We know that that's going to change, and we're going to see if that continues to change with the balance or the balance attack with the rush, the passing attack. Jarvis Landry, um, he's our uh, next individual to talk about. He actually got traded to the New Orleans Saints, um, but last year. He was actually able to play in um, a total of 12 games. He did miss five games. He had an MCL sprain week two. Um, he missed four games because of, because of it and then had COVID on one of those games. And so, um, you know, he was able to finish off the season. So that's a really good sign, specifically now that he's headed over to New Orleans. Um, you know, with the un unknown um, with Michael Thomas over there, we're going to see if Jarvis Landry is going to make an immediate impact in that in that fantasy 
um, uh, team as well. But Jarvis Landry, he's kind of 57th rank uh, overall wide receiver in your redraft leagues. Um, he did produce six rushes, 40 yards for the Browns, and 52 receptions at 570 yards, adding another two rush TDs and two reception TDs. So he's very, he's very versatile, um, and I'm sure they're going to utilize him in the same way, or at least very similarly, in New Orleans. Um, kind of moving on and talking lastly about your tight ends for the uh, Cleveland Browns. Uh, specifically, Austin uh, Harrison Bryant. Harrison Bryant is your uh, 38th tight end overall in the redraft leagues. Um, he was able to play in 15 games total, but missed two. Um, he only missed the games because of COVID, unfortunately. Um, but no significant injuries there. 21 receptions, 233 yards, three reception TDs. Austin Hooper, he got traded to the Tennessee Titans. Um, during the offseason, he's going to be your uh, 25th tight end in redraft leagues overall. Um, and then David Njoku. Uh, Njoku. Um, he is actually just signed a nice good tender with the Cleveland Browns, so they expect him to be a focal point in that offense, specifically now with the addition of Deshaun Watson. Uh, Njoku, he's ranked 17th tight end overall, so they're expecting big things from him. He did miss two games last year. Um, but he did play in 15. He had a grade one knee sprain in week five and only missed one game for that and then did have COVID on one of the other games. He added 36 receptions for 475 yards and four reception TDs. So talking about those key acquisitions, uh, the Browns did acquire Amari Cooper, who's going to be your redraft rank 17th wide receiver overall. And they also picked up uh, Jakeem Grant and Hayden Hurst in the offseason as well. Hayden Hurst being your tight end. Um, your rookies that they you know drafted over the offseason was David Bell, ranked 64 wide receiver overall in redraft leagues and 14th overall in your dynasty leagues. And then Jerome Ford, uh, running back from University of Cincinnati. He was your ranked 77th running back overall right now in redraft leagues and 40th in your rookie dynasty leagues. Again, with these key ac acquisitions, I can see a shift happening and a shift happening from not only just rush, 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 but opening the play offense for at least some passing. So, you know, that's going to really open up the offense. That's going to give you some more opportunities for Kareem Hunt in the passing game. That's going to give you more opportunities for Amari Cooper um, to go over the top or at least in the intermediary and then continue to have some success with some of these rookies coming in. So I'm really excited to, you know, what training camp is going to bring unfolding of the Deshaun Watson series and kind of seeing what that unfolds. But uh, stay tuned for more updates for your Cleveland Browns. So again, this is your first and 15 fantasy football podcast. Follow us on Twitter. We'll see you next time.